The newest version of Luminar Neo is now available, update 1.13.0. If you're like many other Luminar Neo users, you may be wondering what's new and whether or not you qualify to get it. In this video, you'll get all the answers that you're looking for. You'll see a quick overview of the Studio Light tool and the brand new Blur tool, as well as a few other things that have been improved or enhanced. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and if you're ready to see some really cool stuff, let's get started. First, let's take a look at what's included in this update. The previously announced Studio Light tool has now been shipped, as well as something surprising and also new, a blur tool. I was really excited to see that on the list, and I've played with it a little bit, and it does some really cool things. I'll show you in a minute. Some minor updates include the panorama stitching tool is now available to use as a plugin for Lightroom, so that's great. As well, the toning tool, which is part of the base program, and the Magic Light AI extension have had some enhancements. As with most Luminar Neo updates, there is now support for additional new cameras, some bug fixes, and some general enhancements. If you want to see the total list of everything that's new, including all the bug fixes, I'll put a link to the What's New page on the Skylab website for you in the description area below. Next, let's take a look at a quick overview of some of these updates. I'm going to save the best ones for last, so keep watching. As I mentioned, you can now get to the panorama stitching extension in Luminar Neo from Lightroom. So if you are like me and you use Lightroom as your main database and catalog, you can now find your panorama images, select them like so. To access the panorama extension, just right click on your selected images, but instead of choosing edit in, choose export, find the Luminar Neo section, and right down here, you'll see Stitch Panorama in Luminar Neo as a new option. So it works the same as the HDR extension, focus stacking, and upscale. The next thing I want to show you is the upgrade to the toning tool. Now, once you've applied some color to your highlights and your shadows, and you want to adjust the balance, previously you had to open it as a separate panel. Now you'll find it right here below the hue slider. So this is a good update that will just streamline your workflow and make it a little bit faster to use this tool. The next update comes to the Magic Light extension. Now if I increase the intensity and apply the tool, there's a whole new section at the top called Brush Control. So it allows you to add or delete different points of light. For example, in this image, it thinks the moon is a light source. So I'm going to use the delete brush and just brush over that so it's not adding a point of light and a star to the moon. I'll zoom in a little bit and likewise I'm going to remove these three stars. But let's say it's missed a point and I want to add one somewhere else. Maybe there's a light at the top and it has missed it. So I can make a small brush and just click the top here and it will add one. So while this is a fairly minor update, I think it makes this tool a lot more usable. Previously, you had to do masking to tell it where you wanted the lights or where not to put the lights, but there wasn't a way to add one in a place that it missed. So I think the add brush is a great option. Moving on to Studio Light. This tool has now moved into the portrait section of Luminar Neo. Previously, in the beta version that I demonstrated in my last video, it was under the Essentials. So if you're looking for it there, you won't find it. Just scroll down into the Portrait Tool section. I've already applied Studio Light to this image. Let me show you what it can do. Amazing, right? I've seen lots of demonstrations where they're showing the strip lights and these funky shadows being applied. But for me, the best use of this tool is just using it plane to alter the light on the face. But you can also still use this tool on images that are not portraits. Let's take a look at that. Here I've applied it to another image and I have used the strip light in this example. To get to that, you just have to open the light customization panel at the bottom. Then you can see there are options for pattern and texture. So I've chosen strip 
And then once you've done that, you can move it around, change the angle, and change the size. It's actually pretty smart because if you look at it, see how it's applying the stripes across the image? It's actually going through there and making reflections on the cup. Watch as I move it around. So it's pretty smart. I'm eager to see what else I can do with this tool. Watch for a more comprehensive video on this tool coming out soon. Okay, I've saved the newest and coolest for last, the blur tool. To find it, just scroll down to the creative panel and there it is, blur. You have three kinds of blurs that you can apply. Gaussian or general blur, motion or twist. So I had an idea to do motion to make the leaves move in this image. So I'm going to apply it quite liberally and then adjust the direction. And of course, as per most of the tools in Luminar Neo, you have the ability to mask. So you can simply paint in where you want the blur to occur. In this case, just on the leaves. Now, of course, I'm not doing a perfect or really great job here. I just want to show you what's possible with this tool. Here's a quick before and after. That's just one application of this tool. Let me show you another example. Here I've used the masking tools, including a linear gradient and then mask AI to take it off the human. And I've applied a Gaussian blur. So you can see what it's doing to the background. Now you may be saying, well, I can already do that with portrait bokeh. Aha, but what if your image is not a portrait? Then that tool won't work. So in that instance, the blur tool comes to the rescue. But I'm not done yet. I've got one more example of the blur tool. Now I've duplicated this original image as a layer. I'll show you why in a minute. I'm going to apply motion blur, change the angle so that it's going straight up and down. This is a really common thing to do with images of tall trees like this. And then you can apply the tool again. So if it's not strong enough, guess what? Just apply it a couple more times. In this case, I'm applying it three times. Here's the before and after. Pretty cool, right? Now remember I added this as a layer? So that adds one more option of adjusting things. We can change the blend mode. So look at how cool that is. We can have a partial blur or create something really abstract. That's neat. But we're not done yet. Take a look at what I did with this image. Previously, you had to use Photoshop and a series of complicated actions to do something like this. Now, using the blur tool with the twist option, you can create this easily in a few minutes. Once again, with the blend modes, the possibilities are endless. In this case, I duplicated the layer and made the twist go the opposite direction to create a double twist. Of course, there are actually many more applications for the Blur Tool and the Studio Light Tour, and I'll be doing full videos on each of those. The Blur Tool is something that people have been asking for for a long time, especially when adding a texture overlay or something like that. You can now just blur the new layer as opposed to doing convoluted other steps previously. Okay, let's address the elephant in the room. Do you still have questions and confusion surrounding the Luminar Neo pricing and new packages? Not sure if you need to pay to get this upgrade or not, or which things are included and which are not? Well, you're not alone. I've been getting tons of messages from subscribers about these very same questions. So I'm going to try and simplify it again and answer the top three most common questions that I've received. But before I do that, let me ask you a favor please remember to give this video a thumbs up. Then subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. We really appreciate your support, sharing the videos on social media as well. It's the best way for us to reach new people and grow our channel. As an added bonus for you, we have a couple of freebies. Check the link in the description area below and you can sign up to get our Luminar Neo Keyboard Shortcuts Cheat Sheet and you can also watch the first two lessons in our Luminar Neo The Complete Course for free. Just click the links in the description below. Okay, let's get back to that elephant. 
pricing. If you are brand new to Luminar Neo and you haven't purchased it previously, the options are actually pretty straightforward. You have two choices. You can go with a subscription or you can buy the lifetime license. If you opt for the subscription, you can pay monthly, annually, or every two years. You'll notice that the two-year plan is the most cost-effective when you average it out monthly. Note that you will not be paying $6 a month. That is the average you will pay for the two years total upfront. If you buy the lifetime license, you'll pay a little bit more, but you own it forever. And make note that lifetime license does not mean lifetime free updates forever and ever. It means that you own the version that you purchase as of right now. Next, if you currently own some version of Luminar Neo, this is where it gets more complicated and there's a lot of confusion. One of the most common questions I received was, if I've previously paid for a lifetime license, do I get this update? And if I have to pay for it, how much is it? Once again, you have two choices. First, you can opt to get something called the Creative Journey Pass. Currently, during the back to school sale, it's on for $49 US. Regular price is $79. The second most common question I get is around switching from the lifetime license to the pro subscription. That's your second option. You can do that and pay $59 currently for your first year. <laughs> Phew, that's confusing, right? And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There may be other variations and connotations of what you've bought previously and what's available now. So if you're still not clear, add a comment below and if I don't know the answer, I'll find out for you. Remember, whichever route you decide to go, if you need to update or you want to switch or you want to purchase it to get started, remember to use my discount code DPM10 to get 10% off when you check out. The last question that I received a lot was what happens if I switch to the subscription plan and then change my mind and cancel at a later date. That one becomes a little bit more complicated as well. My current understanding based on the answers I've received directly from Skylum is that if you cancel your subscription, you will revert back to the lifetime license. Which version that is and what's included, I'm not exactly 100% sure. So again, there's still some confusion even amongst partners like myself. The best plan is if you're not sure, fire an email off to Skylum, support at Skylum.com, and they will answer your questions for you. I don't know about you, but aside from all the questions and confusion, I'm excited to get started and using the new tools right away. If you enjoyed this video and you do want more extensive learning, check out my complete course now. Or you can also stay here on YouTube and watch another video. Take care and I'll be back soon with more tutorials.